Topaz Labs have done it again. We have another update for Topaz Photo AI. This is version 1.0.7. Today, I'm going to give you some observations and some brush masking tips. Do I like the new brush masking in Photo AI? I really do, but it's not quite there yet. But Topaz are working right now on improving it. And I can't wait to see what they come up with. I'm really excited. Stay tuned. Hello everyone and welcome to the joy of editing with Dave Kelly. So we're looking at this new version of Photo AI today, version 1.0.7. Topaz Labs have been working very hard on this new product. And here's a list of all the fixes with this new update. You may want to pause the video and take a look at this. And please keep in mind that Photo AI is a work in progress. It's not there yet, but it sure is getting there. And bear this in mind, if you own the image quality bundle, which is Sharpen AI, Denoise AI, and Gigapixel AI, you don't pay for Topaz Photo AI. It's yours to use totally for free. And it seems like weekly we're seeing vast improvements to this product. In the link in the description below this video, I'll have a link for Topaz Labs Forum. And this way you could give your feedback about any of the Topaz products. You know, if you're having problems or issues, or if there's things you would like to see in Topaz Photo AI or any of the Topaz products, give them your feedback because this is a company who really listens. So make sure you do that and Photo AI will be even better for it. Here's a list of the changes to this update while making a mask brush stroke the feathering won't be rendered so you can see what precisely is being selected and i'll show that to you also under face recovery the face recovery filter is now enabled if there are detected faces then we'll automatically select all or no faces on toggle as appropriate i'll show you what that means enabled the mask softness slider when the subject is set to none so those are the main changes to this update with that being said let's check out the new update version 1.0.7 for photo AI. By the way, Topaz Video AI is on sale right now for $159. That's a really good savings, and you'll save $140, and that ends on November 4th, so grab it. Just click on my affiliate link in the description below. It'll take you right here where you can purchase any of the Topaz products. When you do that, you help support the joy of editing with Dave Kelly. And for that, I thank you. Now, here we are inside of Topaz Photo AI. I want to show you one of the first new changes to this update and it deals with face recovery now if you'll notice under preferences under autopilot configuration i have my face detection turned off and i do this for a reason i feel that uh photo ai can scan the image quicker if it doesn't have to look for a face that's why i keep it off but here is the change i'll just close this now if i come up here to file and you'll notice I have two images already inside of Photo AI. If I come up here to File and click Open, I can go ahead and choose another image. And I'm going to choose this image right here and click Open. And remember, I have auto detection for faces shut off. But you'll notice Topaz goes ahead and does look for those faces. So apparently it can determine if a face is there and it will go ahead and do that. And that's new to this update. I'm not working on this image today. I just wanted to show you that for face recovery, but to close an image, all you need to do is come up here to file and click on close image. The image that's open will close. And you'll notice now it is not down here in the thumbnails. And to choose a different image, just click on that thumbnail and it'll go to it. And by the way, you'll notice when you hover over these thumbnails, it tells you what has been done to them, what Photo AI has done. And Photo AI is really fast. And this is what I really enjoy about it. It's going to take care of denoising, sharpening, and you can do upsizing all with one product. And I think that's a great time saver. But you can see this has been denoised. It used the normal mode. It says 0%. But if I come up here and click on remove noise, you'll actually see it's actually on a 1. So very minimal noise reduction. It is stock image and there really was no noise in it. Now on the other image, it tells us it denoised it in the normal mode at 30% and it also sharpened it in the standard mode using 31% sharpening and the other 30% is for clarity because if you look at sharpen and we open this up 
you'll see we have a strength. That's the amount of sharpening. And we also have a clarity adjustment, which I really like as well. But I like that information that we get on the thumbnails. And that happened a few updates back, I believe. And by the way, if you make any adjustments in these different modules, if you click reset to auto settings, like right now, you'll see I did a slight sharpening adjustment here, but I really don't need it. So if I click reset to autopilot settings, you'll see sharpening turns off. And then look at these uh, thumbnails as well. Not only when you hover over them do you get information, but if you're not hovering over them, you can see those little icons like the bird image has just had denoising. That's the symbol for denoising, that circle. And then the triangle symbol on the uh, second image as well as the circle tells us that both denoising and sharpening have been used. And now let me show you the change to the masking brush and I'm going to give you some tips for getting better use of that brush. The masking brush, by the way, only works with the sharpened module. But to get to that masking brush, you have to come up here. Right now you see no subject detected. And the reason that is for me is because on autopilot configuration, I have mine set up for subject detection to not choose any subject. Because again, I find that slows photo AI down. So I leave that off by default for me anyway. I like to leave that off. If I need it, I can just go ahead and turn it on right here. And just to clarify what I mean by slowing photo AI down, when it's doing its initial scan, it does not have to look for a subject. And it takes it a few seconds to actually find a subject. So by shutting that off, I don't have that slowdown. And then if I need to find a subject, I can just come up here. Right now it says no subject detected. Click select. And right now it's on none because I have the auto pilot configuration set up to give me none if I click on default and by the way default I believe is to find a subject and I wish they would call that subject that's something if you're listening to Opaz I wish you would change call default subject so when I click default you'll notice down here see it has to run and find the actual subject and now it's found the subject. But look how great of a job it does. Now, this is not a hard image for it to find because there's just nothing but a blue sky behind this bird. But even on an image where there's a lot of subjects to choose from, it does a pretty good job of finding the main subject. I almost forgot to show you. Here's another change. If you're set to none, this softness adjustment was off by default. Now they turned it on. I don't know the reason for that but it's on all the time, even if it's set to none. Before, it would have been grayed out. Now, let me show you the change to the AI brush. And it's a small change. However, I think it's a good change. Now, the reason I chose this image, it's because it's a good one to show you some tips of better using the AI brush. After really working with this AI brush, I find it's better than I originally thought it was. And I'll show you what I mean. But first off, let me show you one of the new changes or improvements to this AI brush. As we all know, Photo AI is a work in progress, but here's some information from Topaz Labs. We still have a lot more planned. Here's some of the things we are actively working on improving. Number one, the AI brush. That's great news. Number two, performance of the preview panel particularly when zoomed out on large images. Before, when I was first starting to use this AI brush, I have a Wacom tablet and pen. I was using that, and I found that's probably not the best way of using the AI brush. I found by using my mouse, I got much better results. And so I'll be using my mouse today. Now, I think a bug has been fixed. And by the way, we have an add and subtract. It's very basic, very simple, but that is all going to change. I'm sure of that. But a bug is now gone, and that is when you move your mouse around, you can see the brush follows your mouse. It stays pretty much right up with it. If I go real fast, it'll lag a little bit, but it works pretty good. And it before, it was like, remember, it was jumped down about a half of an inch below the crosshatch, which I didn't like, but now it's really staying in line with the crosshatch. Now, here's the improvement. I'm going to left click with my mouse and drag and you see how the brush doesn't go like soft. In other words, wherever the softness is set, see how it gets soft here when I go away from the brush. But if I click anywhere, watch this area, it will show like a hard edge again. You see that? Now I'm dragging in a different area and you can see a hard edge. When I let go of my mouse, everything gets soft. But as soon as I click anywhere with a mouse, all the softness on any edges will disappear, which helps us determine 
what we're actually painting in or out. And how soft those edges are is determined, again, by this softness adjustment. So watch these edges here. If I take this to the left, they become hard. If I take it the hoard to the right, they get very soft. So you can adjust the amount of softness you want, which is really nice when you're trying to blend an area, you know, a sharp area into an area that's not as sharp. You want some nice feathering there. And that's what this is for, to feather the edge of your selection. Now, obviously, I don't want those strokes there. So if I come over here and click clear strokes, they go away. Now, by the way, we also have some different ways of finding a subject. As I said, default is the same as subject. So if I click default, Photo AI finds my subject. And look how great of a job it has done, as I said earlier. If I click portrait, it who knows what it's going to find. Well, it did a good job too there. And let's click landscape. And okay, on landscape, it found the area the bird is perched on as well as the bird itself but I really don't want to sharpen all that. And if I go to none, obviously we have no selection. Now for me, I find this AI brush to be more of a refinement brush than anything. So I zoomed into the image to 200% and you can see it overshot an area here and this area and here it missed. So I'd have to refine it. Everywhere else, it's done a really good job. So I would use it to repair these areas and it does a fantastic job for that. Let me show you. Now, to remove an area, I would have to change from add to subtract. And what I like to do, and this is why I like to use the mouse, is just hover over an area. Like if I hover over right in here, you see that? It goes away. So all I need to do is left click with my mouse and that's fixed. This area right here, if I hover over it, you can see it's going to get better. So give it a left click of the mouse and it's fixed. Now this area I cannot repair. It cannot find this. This is where I think Topaz need to give us a basic brush where we can literally just brush on that little talon there. Is that what that's called? Talon? Claw? We could brush that right on and fix it. Now it's missed this area right here. So if I come and click add, I can hover over this area. See? If I hover over it, see it turns like a lighter red. And then just give it one left click of the mouse and it fixes it. And come to this section, give it one click and it's fixed. This is what I mean by I think it's improved. And over here, I want to remove this area. But as I hover, you can see areas that it's going to find. To me, it looks like almost like a jigsaw puzzle. Let me click subtract and I could come right here and hover in and see if I go too far, it's going to cut into his leg there. So if I come like right here and click it once, it cleans it right up. And even right here, if I come in, you can see what's changing there and give it one click and it's fixed. And right here, if I come in too far, it's going to go into the leg. But if I come right here and give it one click, it's going to, you know, it, kind of, it doesn't get it quite the whole way. But that's really not an issue because don't forget the brush is feathered. Now I have it feathered to to a number 13, which I believe is probably like, I'm thinking 13 pixels. But again, I feel this is a refining brush. After you're happy with what you've done, all you have to do is click done. And now that is your mask. And remember that mask is only used with sharpening. So if I click on sharpen and hover over subject only, you can see there's that mask, right? Whatever amount of sharpening I have applied, it's only going to be applied to the area inside of the mask. And as I said, this image doesn't really need any masking. And so let me go ahead and shut this off. But I just wanted to give you a few tips there. I have one more image to show you some other tips on. But one thing I've noticed, and I'm just going to throw this in. At first, I thought enhanced resolution didn't do much, only just for upscaling images. But I do find on low resolution images, if you toggle this on, and right now it's set for low resolution, look at the bird. Now I have no sharpening on it. Look at the bird. Now let me shut it off. Can you see the difference there? I think it really helps to improve that image. So I just thought I'd throw that in as an extra bonus. Now let's click on this other image and I'll give you some more tips for the AI brush. If we look at the AI settings here, we can see some noise has been removed and it has sharpened a soft image. Let me go ahead and fit this to screen. So if you come down here and click, and click fit, we'll see the entire image. And you'll notice it says no subject detected, because remember by default, I said auto configuration up not to detect a subject. 
So if we check select on, you see none is set because that's all I have it set up. If we click on default, you'll notice we don't see any red overlay here, meaning it did not find a subject. But what if I only want to sharpen up this leaf cluster and this leaf cluster right here? Photo AI has done a great job at sharpening this image. And one thing I'll say about Topaz products, they're only going to sharpen the areas that need sharpened. Areas out of focus, they won't sharpen. So let's go ahead and zoom in to say 200%. And I want you to note something here. We don't see any of the sharpening or the noise reduction taking place in this image. And right now, if you look down here, it says viewing original. If you want to see up close what your image looks like for noise reduction and sharpening, do not have refined subject opened up. So let's go ahead and say done. And now you can see. See how this area over here is an out of focus leaf and it has not sharpened it. This is what I mean by how good Topaz products are, but these areas are sharp. Now, if I left click and hold with my mouse, you can see here's the before. See how the image gets softer. And then when I release the left click, you can see the sharpness come. But what if I only want to add sharpness to this leaf, as I said, and this leaf and leave the rest go? What we need to do is click select. And as you know, Photo AI has not found a subject. So we're going to make our own subject. We're going to paint our subject in. So we're going to use add. And now with my mouse, and you can see my brush right there. You see it? Now I am not clicking it. I'm just hovering. If I hover over areas, you can see what's going to get selected. And this is one of my tips because you see the tip of this leaf right here. I hover over it and I give it a click. Same with this leaf over here. I can hover over this leaf. And if you hold your space bar down, you can drag this over. And I can hover over this leaf. Now it's going to get too much there. So that will be a problem. This would be a case where I'd have to brush that in. But let me just go ahead and click right here. Now, if I left click and drag and be careful as I go around here, look how I can just capture that entire edge of that leaf. You see that? Pretty nice. And it went over into there, but that's okay because I'm going to get that. You can always click subtract and subtract something off. Okay. Now I'm just going to come up through here and just like that. And then I'll just drag in this area and fill this right in. So that was pretty easy. And now over here, I can click and just drag down like this, staying in here. And like I said, those look like jigsaw puzzle pieces, don't they? Click down in here, over in here. Now it overshot an area, but we can fix that and it missed the little area. Whoops, I didn't want that. So I'll click subtract and hover right over here and click one time. You see that? Go back to add. And now I'll hover right here and you can see where it picks up that area right there. See that click? And I can hover here and click. I can come here, click, click. And so you could do a series of clicks as well. I can come right here and give that one click. Now I don't want this, so I can click subtract, hover over this right here and click. And now go back to add and come to the end here. Click once, click right here. And now I've sped the video up, but that's all I'm doing. Dragging, clicking for tough areas. I give it just a click. Remember, you can hover over an area. You can use your space bar to move around, hold your space bar. And then with your mouse, you can drag. I went ahead and finished up the other leaf right here. I didn't want you guys to get bored watching me do that whole thing. When you're done, you just click done. Now let's go back and fit this to screen by clicking fit. And now if we hover over subject here, you can see there's the leaves that I painted in. I created my own subject. So they're getting the masking job. So sharpening is only affecting these leaves. Now let's open up sharpen because I also said I have this clarity. So we have some sharpness on here and now I'm gonna take this clarity slider and drag it up to the right a little bit and just add a little extra clarity to that. Now let me zoom into 100% so we can see it a little bit better. And we can even use the split screen here. So let's click this and let's drag this over. So on the left is the before and here is the after, just getting the leaves that I want. In conclusion, I believe this AI brush is a lot better than I originally thought it was. It was just getting to learn how to use it. So give it a try and let me know what you think. And we still need a basic brush where we can fix a little trouble areas that the AI brush can't get.
get. By the way, I want you to know, coming up this Wednesday at 8 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, I'll be releasing a video introducing you to the backdrop creator found in, right now, Photoshop Beta, but it will be coming to Photoshop 2023 soon, hopefully sooner than later. And think mid-journey, think artificial intelligence where we can create backdrops, textures, skies, you name it. It's coming, and I'm excited about it, and you'll see that this Wednesday, so stay tuned, 8 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Well, there it is, everyone. I hope you enjoyed this uh, tutorial today, looking at the latest update, version 1.0.7 for Photo AI. If you enjoyed the tutorial today, please give it a like and share it with your friends, and if you're not yet a subscriber to my channel, please subscribe. Click that bell notification icon. Every time I upload a new tutorial, you'll get notified. I want to thank each and every one of you for joining me today in the joy of editing with Dave Kelly, and I'll see you all right here next time, but until then, happy editing!